Hello and Happy New Year to you all. We're back. I was just picking some nice pak choy leaves. Uh, you know it is over Christmas. The food that you eat is so rich. So it's going to be really great to have something nice and tasty and succulent and a nice stir fry. It may be turkey, but it'll be a lovely stir fry. The jobs for the month are going to be slightly different this year to where they were last year. Not least because, I think I said at the end of 2022, I've been going through all your comments and uh, lots of you suggest other jobs that can be done for the different months, ones that we hadn't included. So I've been through those and I can now include those uh, within the jobs for the month. However, because there are quite a lot, uh, what we've decided to do is to take out of the jobs of the month what you can sow and what you could be harvesting. And we shall be doing that as a separate video. In today's programme, we're going to be going through the jobs for January. And as you can see, one of the jobs that you can be doing for January is the winter pruning of your fruit bushes. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I've already made a start. You saw me at the beginning taking this branch off here. And I've taken another one off here. And essentially what I'm trying to do is to make a goblet shape and to take out any of the branches that are crossing each other. And then finally, once I've done that and got the structure as to how I want it, any that are remaining, I shall take back by about a third of their length. Also, this month, the apple trees or pear trees, you could be winter pruning them. And again, quite similar to the soft fruit bushes that we were doing earlier, you want to aim for an open goblet shape. And then this is still quite a young tree, so all we're going to be doing to this is actually reducing the amount of growth on it by about a third on each branch. There's some pruning jobs that, if you haven't done them already, need to be done during this month. Um, and the window will stay open probably until mid-February. So that's anything to do with soft fruit, so red currants, black currants, raspberries and then of course you can go on to do your apples and pears and give them their winter pruning but also while we're on the subject of fruit bare root fruit bushes it's not a bad time of the year provided the ground is not frozen to be planting any new soft fruit bushes um, and I know I had a question from somebody I think it was just before we finished for Christmas um, they had some uh, raspberry plants that were already in the garden, but were in the wrong place for them. Um, and they wanted to know if they could uh, dig those up and whether it would be okay to plant those in. Obviously I answered them. Uh, but yes, essentially this is the time of year when you can actually plant bare-rooted soft fruit bushes. It's also as part of your jobs for January as that you need to be continuing on with your bed prep whenever the weather enables you to do that. So I, if you're not like us and you need to dig your garden, please don't try it when it's really frosty or really very wet because if it's frozen, clearly you, it, you'll struggle to lift it, get your fork into the ground or your spade. But equally, if it's rained for two or three days, you'll be amazed at just how heavy that soil is once you get that onto your spade. You're speaking to somebody who has heavy clay soil and has attempted to do that over the years. <laughs> oh, new dig, I'm so glad you came along. 
If you're like us and you're new dig, then as each of these plants finish their harvest, then we can twist them out and you can spread your layer of compost over the top, just as we've done here for these broad beans. Which, I have to say, are looking really good. But we'll come back to those in another video. Pigeons that like to come away and they do particularly like brassicas at this time of the year. There's not too much about for them to eat and they will eat your brassicas. So you'll need to ensure that like us that you net them and every now and again just check them. It's, you know, it's, it's been windy again today. It's, in fact, it's been a windy old week really and it can soon loosen these and you can soon find yourself coming out here and those pigeons will have helped themselves to our purple sprouting broccoli. Won't they, Scylla? Now, if you haven't done so already, January is a good time to be looking at your seed box. Just going through them and seeing what's out of date, what empty packets you've got, and then you can put your order in nice and early to get your seeds so that you're ready to go when the new season starts. You can look through the seed catalogues. They're all falling through your door at this time of the year uh, and see maybe what new varieties you might want to try. But it's not just the seed packets that you need to be thinking about ordering. You also need to be thinking about ordering your potatoes. It's not going to be long before they can go into the ground. If you order them now, they're going to come probably towards the end of January, which then gives you all of February and into March to be chitting them and get them ready to be planted into the ground. Now, if you're a regular follower of our channel, you will know that we've already planted into the ground our garlic and our shallots and our spring onions. And they overwinter and that brings us a harvest sometime late June, early July this year. Now you're probably right on the cusp in January of being able to plant overwintering shallots and garlic. But pretty soon after that, it's gonna be the spring varieties, the one that you're going to plant in spring. And if you don't wanna to go to the trouble of planting yours early like we have, and you're gonna be planting spring varieties, then you need to be getting those on order too. Once you've actually ordered the seeds, then January is a great time to be making your plans for 2023, sorting out any crop rotation that you want to be doing and just having a plan of where your things are gonna go. Now, it might not always seem that you need a plan, but believe me, you do. And as I've said on many occasions, Always keep your little black book with you. You write things in there and, you know, it just reminds you to do things. You know when you planted something, when you sowed something. All the information is there which will help you and help you decide when you're going to maybe sow your next seeds to do your succession planting. So I've just come out here this morning and I've written in here it is... 10 degrees, there are gusty winds, light cloud in the sky, and some rain about. And then whatever else I do in this garden today, I will also add to that. Now, talking of planning your garden, I know lots of you have asked me about a sowing calendar to help you out with the succession planting, and I've just about finished that, um, and we hope to be able to make a whole video on that as we get toward the end of January and then obviously gives you the chance if you want to have that uh, and we can let you have the link to that calendar. Also with it I've done a plan of the garden too so you can marry the two up to see where they're actually going in each of our five beds in the garden. So hopefully you'll get some fun from that not only that it'll also give you a visualization of what we're doing. And of course, if we get it wrong, you can be looking and think, hang on a minute, you said in bed one, plot five, you're going to be planting this. You can ask that question then, can't you? And then I'll be able to give you the reason why that may have happened. So look out for that video, which shall be coming out this month. As I've just got a couple more tweaks just to make to 
uh, that and then we'll be ready and good to go uh, and you can have copies of that. And then the last thing which I thought was really good, I didn't say I know on the jobs for January in 2022, but somebody commented on it. And so I'm going to tell you all about it now. If you're ordering your seed potatoes, start saving your egg boxes as they become empty because they are just the right shape for your little seed potatoes to go in and allow them to get enough light to be able to chit away ready for planting. I do hope your 2023 has got off to a real good start. Ours certainly has. And we shall see you next time.